Hello, welcome. It's John, Shopkeep Arty, and today we are flying to southern India, where we're going to be joining Mustafa Dagani for a new artist uh, in our channel to give you a slightly different perspective. It's always good to introduce new cultural perspectives on art and how to do your paintings and things like that. And Mustafa is going to explain how he approaches his art. Uh, a really fascinating chap, and we'll, we'll find out a little bit more about him very shortly. If you want to paint along, the uh, materials list, the recommended materials and the reference photo can be found on our video library page where search for the video and search for Mustafa and uh, click on the class info page and it will give you a whole list there so that you can paint along. Right, let's fly to Mustafa now. Hi, good afternoon. Wait a minute, Mustafa. We are just zooming in. Okay. We should be joining you shortly. We're coming in from wow. space. There we go. Here we come. <laughs> Down we go. Lovely. And there we go. We're zooming in. Yes. And I think looks very hot and arid there at the moment. But I think Mustafa is in a lovely air-conditioned room. So <laughs> let's go and say hello to him now. Hi, Mustafa. How are you? Hi. How are you, John? Very well. Very well. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So uh, you are in, whereabouts are you? Are you in a, your art studio? Yes, I'm in my, actually I am in my room, in my studio, my small table and my studio, yes. Right, okay. Now the camera that I'm looking at you at is just to your left. So uh, if you can Absolutely. look, if you can look to your left. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. There we go. <laughs> You're okay. on there. You're on TV. Um, so, okay. uh, so when did you when did you start art? Have you always been an artist? Well, no. I have always been an artist throughout my school life. I have been uh, winning the prize for art each and every year. Ah, right. In my Brilliant. school, yeah, up to up to the tenth standard, till I was in Bombay. And right. then from there, uh, two years, of course, I didn't, there was no art class because uh, we passed school and then I joined the high school. And after that, I, my parents had to come to Chennai from Bombay. So we moved, we migrated and we came to Chennai in uh, 80. Right. Okay. And after that, I had to join my father in his business and I had no time for art. And I didn't even touch it. And uh, after about uh, probably 30 years, uh, I got an opportunity where somebody came to me and said, I want some 12 pictures drawn in watercolor uh, of fruits and vegetables that are in the Quran. Uh, okay. And I want to make a calendar out of it. So I did that. And uh, well, it did not uh, go through very well. Because that was the first time that I was trying to, you know, get my art together and, uh, you know, trying to make a good, uh, but it didn't come out so well. But nevertheless, I got into it and then the journey started. Right, so right. I have been starting, uh, yeah, I started, uh, because I had a passion for watercolors. So uh, I started uh, looking up YouTube videos and I'm a self-taught artist. I have not right. gone to any class. Right, so, self-taught. Yes. How, self how have you, how have natural you discovered the? How have you discovered the art materials that you use? Because did I read somewhere that you actually created your own pigment? Yes, for... yes. No, no. I have not uh, created my own pigment, but uh, uh, I am. Uh, I like to uh, you know buy paints that are not expensive and do the same work. You see, I don't want to go in for very uh, branded products or, you know, I'm using uh, the paper that I use always is uh, handmade paper. Right. 100% cotton rag. So okay. the arches, arch and the other papers are very expensive and I don't yeah. want to, you know, and, and it's not necessary also. These are fine. So yeah. I would also is, recommend... Is, local, you... is the manufacturer, the handmade manufacturer, is that local to you? It's it's not local. It's in the next state. It's in Karnataka. In the next state, in near Bangalore. And, right. Um, I think uh, his uh, name is. Um, I can't remember the name, but uh, is, I it, get is it? it uh, is it Kadi uh, paper? Kadi paper? Uh, yes. Yes. Handmade. Handmade Kadi paper. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. it is very nice. I would suggest that, that. Well done, Karen. Texture, <laughs> texture is also good. Yes. Texture yeah. is nice, and uh, you know, and hundred percent cotton dry. 
Right. So that is that is where what you need 100% because cellulose doesn't work. You don't you can't mix the pigments on the paper. It's very yeah. difficult. And then it warps and wraps and all you know, you know bubbles and you know then you can't paint the straight line. Yeah. It's yeah. very difficult. This well, also does I, I, I can't wait to I can't wait to start today. But uh, just okay. before we do a quick summary of what's what's going to happen, so um, I'm going to pass over to Mustafa very shortly, and we've got an overhead camera, and he'll walk you through the brushes that he uses, the colours that he's got sorted, and then we're going to paint a lovely magical beach scene. I think that's the plan, anyway. Yes. Yes. Uh, at the end of this class, if you want to or fancy doing a longer workshop with Mustafa, please do message us via our Patreon WhatsApp or uh, on via our website and we'll sort an, uh, a workshop with him. So so uh, today is all about introducing you to Mustafa. And if you're interested in experiencing a, a longer class with him, please do let us know. Right. So, Mustafa, over to you. Um, OK. And. Very well organized on your table, I can see. Yes. You've got uh, that very well known brush called the toothbrush, <laughs> all the way yes. through, <laughs> all the way through to uh, craft you knife. My mop brushes, my yes. liner brush, my flat half inch. Then this is a small mop brush and a liner brush because sometimes I use a white acrylic paint. So that is why I keep this cheap liner for, for that. And then I have this uh, round eight, eight number eight round, and a one and a half inch flat for the wash. Perfect. And also, I use the palette knife sometimes for giving some textures and you know grass and shrubs. So it gives uh, and also highlights. So I use this or this, but I, this sometimes, you know, it uh, eats into the paper and it... Uh, yeah, it's know, almost too it. sharp. Can so, be too yeah, sharp too sharp, it. yes. So I, I recommend using a palette knife for yeah, that. That's very good. Yeah. And then today, the colors that we are going to use is ultramarine blue. Uh, not rose matter, but uh, we are going to use quinacridone, uh, quinacridone permanent rose. Okay, and then chrome yellow yellow ochre, orange, turquoise blue, paints gray, and emerald gray. So these are the colors that we'll be using today. Right. I've got a, I've got a question for you, which I've... Uh, yes. I, I think I should ask every artist. I've only just thought of it yes. after all these years. What is your favorite color? What's the what's your go-to color that you use a lot in your paintings? <laughs> My go-to color is uh, probably... Ultramarine is one color that is used... Uh, too uh, often in the paintings that I do. Ultramarine. Okay. Ultramarine. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But and I like even this, put uh, it right at the top. You've put it, it's always yeah. the order of priority. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, this turquoise. You know, that, that color really stands it out. But I, this turquoise is not the turquoise that, the color that, uh, you know, these other, uh, Dan, um, this uh, Daniel Smith or, you know, yeah, it's a little different, but it is good. It is good. Daniel Smith is very expensive, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would use these are like these are uh, Cotman. Uh, this is a Cotman. Uh, yeah, right here, this turquoise. It's Vincent Newton Cotman. This is a cheaper version of uh, the uh, right here. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So, right. so Mustafa, you have forty minutes. The clock is okay. starting. Let's starting. Let's make a start. Let's dive in. So I will just remove the tool. And first, I'm going to put a tape right across the paper to create a horizon. Now, I'll be giving a water wash, plain clay water wash to dampen the sky area. And it's very hot here in Chennai. Probably it's 36 or 37 degrees today. Wow. And uh, I've got the air condition on, so it's a little comfortable and hopefully it will not dry as quickly. 
Uh, how is your electric supply? Do, do you have power cuts from time to time? Yes, we, no, no, right now Chennai, we have improved. India has improved a lot. And if we do have power cuts also, we need not call anybody. They come and do it themselves. We don't have to. Earlier, it was very bad. Yeah. But now now India has, uh, the, uh, the, the power cuts are very minimal. Oh, Very that's really that's really good because yes. when when we host people in Africa, that right. can be uh, that can no, be quite it, problematic. It they is have very problematic, products. very problematic. Because I remember I was in Nairobi for five months and we used to get a power shortage, uh, outages for five hours, ten hours. You don't know when it will come. No, no. You see, so yeah, so I was there in Nairobi. Now, Mary Ann has said, um, is the caddy paper smooth? Because the stuff that she's got has more texture because it looks quite smooth. No, this smooth. has got texture. This is oh, got it texture. has. Okay. Yeah. Yes, it has Maybe texture. Maybe it's just it's, the angle, Mary Ann. It's cold pressed uh, handmade paper. So uh, you can't see it because of the, there is a shine on the. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because I have a big bulb here you know, because <laughs> I don't have my light. My light is broken. So I I was in Mumbai, you, you, John. Yes. So I just came to the morning. So I didn't have the time to fix it up. No problem. So just, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. So now we will. Now I'll. I'll summer in blue. I like mixing the colors on the paper. So it. Uh, yes, some some artists like doing that, and others prefer yeah. mixing it on the on the palette. But yeah, yeah I, I do mix on the palette, but I would rather want the colors to mix on the paper. Now I'm using the Pinacridone Rose. And I'm using the one and a half inch flat. And uh, you should not fear, just go. If you fear, then you lose the painting. Yes, I think the the fear experience yes. can increase the more the longer that you've spent on a painting, because yes. you're thinking, oh god, if this line goes wrong, <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> I've yes. just spent an hour, yeah. the last hour painting this. I, I know. Yes. Yes. And this is a low style, so definitely you have to let go. So you can overthink. Maybe you may not get it right. So this is the Camel Artist watercolor. It's pretty cheap. It is about 70 rupees for, uh, I think, 20 ml. And the pigments are nice. Now I take my... And just to let people know what the conversion of 70 rupees is, it's 70, rupees. 70 pence, which I guess would be maybe 80 cents for a tube of paint there we go right right right, right. now i take the chrome yellow yeah 
Yes, I think the paper has already dried. Yeah. Or pick the paint spray. So those darker shades in the sky there, yes, is, yes, is that it's, creating uh, a bit more te textural... Texture and tones and depth. So... When you create your paintings, Mustafa, is is it yeah. mostly from your imagination, or do you do it sometimes? No, for I, have, I have, I have, I do have a reference. I do have a reference photo, but then sometimes I put stuff that is imaginary in the add it or subtract. Yeah, yeah. So. We can't quite see from this angle, but do you have your board on a an incline or is it flat? No, it's not. No, I I always prefer flat because the colors mix; they don't uh, drop down. Yeah. Okay. This kind of painting, but uh, when you have something where you need the colors to mix, uh, 
with gravity, then you have to definitely incline your boat. I prefer painting uh, with my boat flat. When I do such uh, landscapes, otherwise, when I need the gravity, oh, definitely I incline my bow. Yeah. And as a professional artist now, Mustafa, do you? How do you? Um, where do you focus your time? Do you do it on commissions, or do you do mm. a tutoring, or how? How do you tend to? No, sort of... I, this is my first tutorial. And Your first tutorial? Have, yes, my first tutorial, yes. Wow, there we go. <laughs> I have taken one tutorial from Kangan Das and one tutorial from Amit Kapoor, which you hosted on uh, ah, yes. your website. Amit Kapoor, you hosted. But I've taken his, uh, his uh, workshop in Chennai when he was here. Ah, okay, okay. So, yeah, yeah. Yes, Amit Kapoor. I, I, yes, I enjoyed his uh, his watercolor with, with your, in your workshop also. I was there. Ah, brilliant. I was learning. I was learning from him. Oh, lovely. He's a great artist. He's a great artist. I yes. like his style. Yes, effortless, yeah. effortless. Yes, yes, yes. Results of... He's been painting for so many years. Yeah. So many years. So, okay, now we have this part of the sky and stuff is over. I remove the tape. And once it is dry, then I'll do the other uh, uh, little bit of Uh, more pigments and stuff. Now I'm going to do the C and uh, again wetting the whole thing. Yeah, I will definitely get the color uh, mixing if I touch the top uh, horizon. Since this area is light here, we need little less pigment. Now you're thinking about the beach, I, I imagine. Yes, this is the reflection of the area here. It's a very difficult process being the first time that you've tutored, a difficult process. This is, yes, yes it paint is. And almost, you've got to almost verbalize your thoughts as yeah. well. It's very difficult. I, I, it, I, is difficult. it is It is difficult, but... Uh, because you can get into a zone and you're kind of debating with yeah. yourself. Yes, yes. Do yes. Do this, and so. the words don't come. Uh, your mind is uh, occupied <laughs> and the words don't come out. <laughs> so, anyway, but uh, I enjoy... I am uh, mixing orange with uh, uh, ultramarine and a little bit of to get it uh, sandy. And this painting that you're doing today, was this originally from a, a photo? It is a photo, yes. It is, I think, probably Sri Lanka, if I'm not uh, ah, okay. mistaken. And 
Uh, I have been to Sri Lanka up to number of times. I don't remember how many times because uh, I have my relations out there, my uncle, and I enjoy Sri Lanka. Changing my brush. Trying to get some wave texture. We will wait for this to get a little dry. Trying to remove the hard edges because Texture on the beach. And I space some clear water.
then we got to wait a few minutes before we can start again. Hello, can you hear me, John? Yes. I, I don't yes, think yes. you need to wait any minutes. You just have to turn your air conditioning off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, will right. it will dry. It will dry yeah, instantly. It will dry. It will dry. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. yes, that's true. But... Uh... So do you have any, um, while we wait for that to dry, do you have uh -huh. any paintings to hand that you could you could share with us on uh, some recent paintings that you've done? Yeah, I can. Right here, John. Ah, great. Yeah, this uh, uh, this also is a reflection, and uh, this technique is of course uh, palette knife, and the white is uh, the acrylic white uh, highlights. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and this is dry brush leaves. After I have made the branches, then I have after I have painted the branches, uh, dry dry brush technique with uh, like that, you know, the brush parallel to the surface. So it nice. gives you this effect. And I like this kind of because I like this, uh, and this is a flat. Again, I, I don't incline my painting. It is a flat uh, surface. Yes, okay. So that, that is how I get these plumes. You see, once, once I, once I, can you see all this? Here? Yes, yes. The, the... If, it, if it was inclined, it would definitely come down. Yeah. So I would rather want it to take its own course. Yes, okay. So you, so, you create intentional watercolor blue. Intentional, intentional plumes. And yeah. yes, yes, definitely. This is totally intentional plumes. Yes. Yes, this is one layer and then again another layer on top. With the dark, uh, nice. It's a nice uh, feature, especially for foliage or trees. Or foliage, something. yes, absolutely. Yes. And, and it gives you depth in the painting. Yeah. It, it Because it is uh, not very defined. It is uh, very soft. So it gives you a sense of depth, the far away. Yeah. Yeah. And then this, of course, uh, is the foreground. And... Uh, created with uh, a palette knife. Yeah. And I can show you a few more. Yeah, great. Put this to, yeah. This one, I have done it in Nairobi while I was in Nairobi in 2018. That that doesn't look like a scene from Nairobi, though. No, no, it is uh, England. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that looks yeah. uh, quite quite English to me. And this, yes, and this is a very famous artist. I forget his name. Very famous artist. He's, I think, Spanish, probably. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, uh, very nice. So very you nice. the Spanish artist painting in England in Nairobi. <laughs> by by an Indian artist. We truly right. have gone global. Right. We truly have gone right. global. Yes, yeah, we we truly have, yes. This is again the same technique, sky and clouds, flat, not inclined. Lighthouse. Yes, yes, very nice. And and and, and the, the the details are in white. You know, so it gives you perfect uh, details. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Ah, that's it's like an aerial famous... view, an aerial view. Yes, aerial view, and uh, it is uh, in, I think, Slovenia or someplace with the uh, water just running down. Yes, difficult you know, to do. That... I would imagine it's quite difficult to do aerial view of 
cascading water. Yes. Yes, because I like uh, because uh, Amit Kapoor does a lot of this aerial stuff. Yeah. So I also wanted to try some. Yeah. I have done a couple lot of uh, aerial uh, views. But right now I don't have it here. Uh, but you can see these people walking on the Yes, yeah, uh, yeah, that's quite nice. All along. Yeah. Great. Then this is a portrait of a horse. Watercolors. Now, I th I would imagine there's quite a bit of negative painting going on there. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. The whole white is uh, negative. Yes. Yes, and uh, very light pigments on the face here, but this is uh, paper white. Yeah, no, that's that's done really well. Yes. I like that. Yes, yes, it's a it's a very nice. Uh, the way the horse is looking behind, and you know, you get that. Uh, yeah. This is 2018 oh. in Nairobi. Again, okay. yeah. Because Nairobi is so, so calm and uh, beautiful. This is just one small uh, painting I did, generated from uh, AI. Ah, okay. This is an AI, AI scene generated. And I just, uh, <laughs> I generated the AI scene and then I did watercolors. So you used AI to generate the reference photo? Yeah, reference photo, absolutely. Yeah, and then you used that and then you you did it yes. and painted it yourself. Yes. And now, I actually, it. I'll just do a little plug. So I've got a, a, a video on YouTube. It's all about okay. AI art that I did a few oh, weeks okay. ago. And uh -huh. I use that as an example of using AI to generate your reference photos, your reference material. So if you have not watched that, please go and check that out. In fact, I'll link to it at the end of this video. Uh, if you Lovely. Want to Lovely. <laughs> Lovely. OK, so I think now we are, we are done back again. Yes. Yeah. Brilliant. Oh. And uh, for those watching, if uh, make a comment on which uh, which of those paintings really jumped out at you and why, uh, it'd be great to let Mustafa know. So uh, do make yes. a comment uh, in the queue. I have thousands of AI created images, but I am not able to put them online. Oh, <laughs> I will no. do that. I will do that shortly. Yes. Yeah, no, that's OK. Literally thousands. This I'm doing a little highlight. Hope you can uh, watch it. And by the way, this is a white acrylic colors because I I feel that uh, the white watercolor is uh, not very effective for uh, giving highlights. I don't know. So I bought it. It is water-based, so there is no problem.
So these the bottom layer pigments have settled. They have dry now. And I can just do a little to do it a little. We just soften it up. Now we'll do this uh, slight uh, corner part where it's green. Hello, John, are you able to hear me? Yes, loud yes. and clear. Okay, okay, okay. Because <laughs> since there is no sound. I know, I know, I know. Yeah. It's... Nobody wants to listen to my voice, though, so. Yeah. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> right. So when you took a photo of this beach in uh, mm -hmm. in Sri Lanka, was no, I, not, yes, was there, yes. Was there a, uh, a a nice little cafe or restaurant just to the side? There, of, there, uh, there is there is one there is one on the side. Yeah. Oh, I'm very glad you said that. <laughs> you just yeah, imagine yeah, yeah. sipping a pina colada. Yeah. Or yes, something. pina colada, right. But uh, you don't get, I, think, I don't think you get pina colada in, uh, but you do get uh, ginger beer, which is uh, real ginger. Oh, okay. Soda, real ginger yeah. Beer. Elephant house, which is very nice. Then you get orange barley in Sri Lanka, which I like. Right. 
then you get Potelo. Sort of a cafe. Well, now we have to do a nice little boat. And you notice I have not used any pencils. Mary Ann's asked, is that a typical fishing boat that you might see out there? Uh, no, I think, yeah, it is a fishing boat, definitely. But uh, it is a fishing boat, yes. 
But in certain areas, you don't see these. Certain areas, you see different kinds of boats. So it just just depends on where you are in Sri Lanka. Yeah. So it's small, but uh, yeah. And I think uh, we have probably The last thing would be the signature, of course. Yes, John. Thank you. So, well, that was properly. that was lovely. Thank you for for sharing that with us. Yes. And get your you. autograph on there. That was great. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I can feel the warmth from the sea, which is which is lovely. Now, interestingly, yeah. I I I noticed as you were doing because obviously I over the years we've hosted a lot yes. of these shows, but. Um, one of the things within paintings, which is an important component, is that uh -huh. the, the focal points of paintings, right. where where the eye travels around the painting. Right, about. right. How do you plan that when you're... Actually, making... this focal point is right here, this white area, yeah. which is, looks very nice in the painting, of uh, in the photo, of course. Yeah. But uh, that is what is the area here, right here. Yes. That is the focal yeah. point. And then then uh, it's probably the golden ratio as you can see one third yes yeah and one third that way. yeah no, so, that's, that's great and then well, the painting leads into the focal area yeah no it's it's an important thing that when you when you're yes, it is. painting isn't it i think i was it, it uh, amit kapoor i i did try and find this once because we were launching an art course on our platform uh -huh, uh -huh, I was trying uh -huh. to find this bit i think he does very little um thumbnail uh in color of of a painting just so that he can see it in miniature he kind of does a very loose little tiny thumbnail so that he can okay. then, and where should i put the components okay. the, absolutely but i haven't seen amit kapoor do that but i have definitely seen andy evans and do that ah okay okay Andy does it all the time yeah, okay. And they makes a very nice uh, monochrome, uh, you know, sh small images. Yes. And he knows, uh, he does the three tones, the light, the middle tone, and the dark tone. Yes. No, that's always... He, yes, it's the plan. Basically, before any painting, it's always good as a, a rule of thumb to plan the, the, the focal point, where things go in the thing. Right, so, uh, right. As Mustafa said, the values. So doing it Absolutely. in black and white, just to start... Yeah. Before you start the bigger painting, it will save you loads of time, uh, and it will end up time. absolutely, absolutely, resulting in a much better painting as absolutely. well. Um, so, uh, if you've got any words of thanks you'd like me to pass on to Mustafa, please do write that down for me now, and I'll read those through to him uh, in a moment. Also, if you've painted along or if you paint along to the uh, video recording, we'd love to see your paintings and the link to the relevant Facebook post is on our class info page. Um, or alternatively, if you're one of our patrons and you've joined our live session today or whatever, um, you can share the painting on our WhatsApp group. Uh, it's always good to see those. Um, so uh, thank you. Yes. I can, I can do um, better painting uh, than what uh, I have uh, done right now. But uh, it, because... You know that the, the time constraint, and you know the uh, that is why I was going a little fast. Exactly, I, exactly. I it's always, uh, it's yes. always difficult under pressure. I think to uh, yes. with the hour as well. So if yeah, but, um, and I think then, it was good to see some of your paintings in the halfway um, state. Right. Yes. 
Yes. So those are paintings that I, you know, think and I sit and I do. Yes. So that takes time. It definitely does take a lot of time. Yeah. That Especially is. that uh, waterfall thing, aerial view. Yeah. It took me a few weeks to complete because, you know, each section had to be done uh, separately. Yes. I couldn't do it in one shot, not like this. In impossible to do that painting like this. That has got different parts, different uh, tones, different. Uh, so that can be done, but uh, <laughs> time constraint. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yes, yes. I, it's planning the painting can take quite a lot of time, can't it? Before you yeah, even make a start. Definitely, it takes. Yeah, it takes. Um, we, we hosted one artist, I can't remember his name now, but he was based in Belgium. And uh, he had an idea for painting a scene of the countryside, but through his car windscreen that had raindrops on. Oh, okay. And so the painting was of this scene, but distorted because of the raindrops, yeah, right. raindrops. On, which I thought was yeah. very interesting. You know, quite... very, very interesting, very interesting. Yeah, very, very interesting. Nice. Exactly. Right. It, it's just, you know, people take, the mind takes a liking for something. Yes. And then you just, you can't avoid it. You have to do that. Yes, yes. So I am not that kind of an artist. I can do landscapes. I can do seascapes. I can do horse portraits. I've not never done portraits before. I'm going to try portraits also. But yeah. uh, animal portraits and uh, all this kind of stuff. Yes, I, I can do that. So I think yeah. hopefully we will have another uh, session where I can really plan the thing and, you know, uh, do the uh, painting properly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, well, thank you very much for your time today. No Mary Ann said thank you for a relaxing session. Uh, thank she you. Enjoyed it. And uh, Alessandra said, thanks, Mustafa and John. Didn't paint along this time, got delayed with lunch, but okay. it was pleasure to watch and listen so but alessandra no excuses make sure you do it a bit later uh because yes, right. that's it so um thank you very much today uh mustafa and if you, are, you. are patrons watching this um afterwards we've got uh we're starting a new monthly patron share tips and techniques so we're asking okay. our patrons any tips or techniques that they've learned over the last month or so to bring one tip or whatever with them to this session and that's starting in okay. just over 30 minutes hope to see you there uh, but until then it's obviously a goodbye from me but obviously a goodbye and thanks so much to mustafa thank you mustafa well, thank you thank you most welcome thank yep. you sir and obviously you get a big round of applause Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Brilliant. Goodbye and bye everybody and I'll finish on the